the spring was taken from around the firing pin to drive the hammer. The firing pin is retracted by various methods in different weapons and it remains in the rear position until the weapon is fired. To guide the spring, a rod is run through it. The front end of the spring is braced against this shoulder. The rear end of the spring is braced against this supporting block. The rod is attached to the hammer so that the spring pushes against the hammer. When the hammer is pulled back, the spring is compressed. Then the spring drives the hammer forward against the firing pin. To cock this firing mechanism, we can use the same sear, trigger, and sear spring that we used before. When the hammer is pulled back, the sear snaps up into this notch and the weapon is cocked. When the trigger is squeezed, the nose of the sear slips out of the notch and the hammer is driven forward against the firing pin. This mechanism, like the other one, can be cocked simply by opening and closing the bolt. Squeezing the trigger fires the cartridge and sends the bullet out through the muzzle. But it also leaves us with an empty case in the chamber. Before we can get at the case, we have to perform the next step in the cycle of operation, unlocking. We still have the problem of removing the empty case from the chamber. This is known as extraction. On a real weapon, extraction is a serious problem. When a cartridge is fired, the case expands until it's tightly wedged in the chamber. We need something to grip the case firmly and extract it when we open the bolt. The part which does this job is known as the extractor. It has a hook to grip the extracting groove in the head of the cartridge case. The extractor is attached to the front end of the bolt. As the bolt is closed, the extractor snaps into the extracting groove in the head of the case, and it retains its grip as the bolt is locked. Now, when we open the bolt, the extractor pulls the case out of the chamber. Our next problem is ejection, getting the empty case out of the receiver. Notice how the case is held by the extractor. If we pry under the case on the side opposite the extractor, we can eject it from the receiver. If we take a slice off the edge of the bolt, we can get at the case more easily. Now we'll build an ejector in the side of the receiver. It consists of a small lever and a spring. We'll attach the lever so it pivots at one end with the other end held outward by the spring. When we push the bolt forward, the ejector is moved into the side of the receiver. When the case is extracted, the ejector slides into the notch strikes the case and ejects it. Let's watch it again. Our weapon is almost complete, but we still have to feed the cartridges to it one at a time by hand. The actual chambering of the cartridge is satisfactory. The bolt moves it forward and it enters the chamber. But once the weapon is fired and the empty case ejected, we want another cartridge waiting ready to be chambered. In other words, we want some method of feeding. There are several ways we can get feeding. By placing a clip of cartridges in the receiver, by using an ammunition belt, 
or by using a magazine. We'll use a magazine. One side is transparent, so we can see what's going on. Inside is a spring and this follower. As the cartridge is put in from the top, the spring is compressed. As the next round is inserted, the first one is pushed down and the spring is further compressed. The spring, of course, keeps pushing the cartridges against the top. But these lips prevent them from being pushed out. A cartridge can be removed only by sliding it forward like this. And once it is removed, the spring feeds the next one up into position. Now let's install the magazine into the receiver. The magazine is placed so that the top cartridge pushes against the underside of the bolt. When the bolt is opened, it slides back until the face of the bolt clears the rear of the cartridge. Then the cartridge is fed up into the path of the bolt. As the bolt comes forward, it strips the cartridge from the magazine and chambers it. And the spring in the magazine moves the next cartridge up into position. Now, each time the bolt is opened, a cartridge is waiting to be chambered. That's the last step in the cycle of operation, feeding. Our basic weapon is complete. It will perform all eight steps of the cycle of operation. Let's take them in sequence. First, there's chambering, placing the cartridge in the chamber. Next is locking, securing the bolt in place behind the cartridge. Then firing, squeezing the trigger so the firing pin will fire the cartridge. Unlocking, freeing the bolt from the barrel. Next, extraction and ejection, withdrawing and throwing out the empty case. At the same time, cocking, preparing the firing mechanism to fire again. And feeding, placing the next round in position for chambering. Then the cycle starts over again. These are the eight steps any small arms weapon must perform each time it fires a cartridge. The steps may not always come in exactly the same order, and the means of performing them may vary. But regardless of the type of weapon, all eight steps will be performed. And once you know the cycle of operation, you've come a long way toward understanding any small arms weapon.